Hi everyone, I'm Bakhtawar and I talk about books. I've been missing for a while, been doing some major life changes. I redid my space, which is the definition of a major life change to me. Uh, I, you know, did a real Marie Kondo type of purge. I got rid of a lot of things um, so that I could be more mindful of what I'm purchasing and why and, you know, and I discovered a lot of things like the dollhouses I used to like as a kid. Um, today, what are we doing? Can you imagine? I had a nap just before this video because the electricity went and I couldn't shoot and then I fell asleep. Now I've actually forgotten what the video is about. Yes, we're talking about Heart of Darkness by Joseph Conrad because if you saw my previous video, you'd know that I've been on a bit of an anti-colonialist literature type of... I wouldn't say journey, but I think it, it's sort of been the theme that has attracted me a lot in the last couple of months. I had a bit of a reading slump, but it was the sort of thing that stood out to me the most and I was, you know, reading literature and non-fiction that was more closely related with kind of an anti-colonialist and anti-imperialist ideology. So Heart of Darkness popped up because I read somewhere that the, um, the really famous Nigerian author, I don't know how to pronounce his name, I should have checked before I started this video, but my mother is, yeah, so uh, I don't, know how to pronounce his name I should have checked that before I started this video but my mother has been on my case to uh, tone down the perfectionism as it were because it keeps you from making content so I think his name is Shinua Ahibe I think he's very famous he wrote one minute please he wrote this book as well things fall apart which I think is his magnum opus if I'm not wrong so uh, he sort of, I think, quite a while ago, he did this whole piece which I read recently about why Heart of Darkness shouldn't be, you know, considered a classic and it's actually a very dehumanizing piece of work for the African race and um, that Joseph Conrad is actually a very thinly veiled, thinly disguised racist. So I found that very interesting because actually I'd read Heart of Darkness when I was a child and of course as a child you just sort of pick up on some of the imagery you don't really know the implications or you know the world history or or any of it so i reread it because this piqued my interest and we're going to discuss whether you know whether we really think that joseph conrad was racist whether his writing was racist or not and whether or not was he uh you know is, is it actually even an anti-colonialist sort of book or novella rather and uh, Ahibe also uh, seemed to think that it kind of reinforced what the prevalent European beliefs were at the time, that they were actually civilizing, you know, the lesser races as they uh, saw it, and that it actually, you know, it, it did more harm than good, in his opinion. Now, I will say this, because recently I've been reading uh, George Orwell's biography, and, you know, there, there's a lot of... Because I, I think it's uh, we're, we're at that time... Uh, we're at that time in history where we're reevaluating the way we feel about a lot of historical figures. You know, people that you blindly thought, that's a genius, that's a genius, <laughs> genius, genius, genius. And, and now we're like, you know, they're exceptionally flawed and maybe they're not uh, what we thought they were. And then obviously you have all of these, you know, you have in this increased awareness for, you know, obviously racism and people's rights and women's rights and damaging beliefs and and all of that so um i think that literature is getting reevaluated slowly or it has been for a long time in light of what people are more significantly aware of now you know i think to be fair people are always aware you know people are always aware that certain things are wrong but i think they they just go with it most people just go with it and with writers i find uh, unfortunately it is uh, significantly harder to make the distinction because uh, because I remember a while ago, uh, I may already have discussed this, I was reading Lovecraft and I thought that a lot of his writing was uh, significantly racist. I don't think that it, it was meant to be, but it still was, which is odd. So I think it's it's, it's sometimes difficult with a writer because you don't know uh, whether they are, um, whether are they depicting what they are seeing in society at the time? Are they, you know, showing us the point of view of people who think like that or is it what they believe themselves so it's 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 a it's a bit of a stretch to uh figure it out but we're gonna try and of course if you've read heart of darkness uh do definitely 
write your experiences down below. I would love to discuss it. I'm not like some expert or anything, but I, I wanted to really reread it with a sharper eye and my, well, you know, adult mind, as it were. So a short summary. Wait, I haven't shown you the book. This is Heart of Darkness. This is a very old copy. It's from my childhood. But still, it's all right. I mean, I've, I've marked out a lot of things that I'm going to talk to you about. I wish I had like a stand that I could just put this on. <laughs> so I'm going to start off with a short summary. Heart of Darkness is narrated largely by a sailor named Marlowe who accepts a commission to sail to the African interior, namely the Congo, which has been brutally colonized by the Europeans, namely for ivory and such. So the f for the purposes of this colonial enterprise, the indigenous population has been forced to work for the Europeans. They're overworked, they're malnourished, they're starving, they're dying in large numbers, and their lands um, obviously have been usurped by uh, the colonizers. And you know, Marlowe, as soon as he, well, lands, for lack of a better word, I don't know what the equivalent is for, for boats. They come ashore. So yeah, when he comes ashore, he sees all of this brutality and he sees uh, the indigenous local people in shackles and chains, or they're sort of crowded behind bushes and they're dying. Well, wait. I'm going to read you a passage that I really like. I hope I marked it, because otherwise it's going to take a long time to find it. <laughs> so here uh, you see uh, Joseph Conrad's first kind of um, foray, if you like, when he's first describing this colonial enterprise, how he looks at it. I'm assuming this is how he looks at it, because this is how the narrator looks at it. And My glasses. He says they were conquerors, and for that you want only brute force. Nothing to boast of when you have that, since your strength is just an accident arising from the weakness of others. They grabbed what they could for the sake of what was to be got. It was just robbery with violence, aggravated murder on a great scale, and men going at it blind, as is very proper for those who tackle a darkness. The conquest of the earth, which means mostly taking away from those who have a different complexion, or slightly flatter noses than ourselves, is not a pretty thing when you look into it much. So obviously he's against it. He sees that it is, because writers are not, well, writers are not really known for their greed, really. Uh, it's, it's not something that is characteristic of someone who is very much interested in literature. He, he sees immediately that it's, it's something very, very ugly. And the darkness that he speaks of, which is one of the ways you can understand the metaphor, Heart of Darkness, is the darkness within men. Within men who are blinded by greed and ambition and who must appropriate that which does not belong to them. This darkness to control and utilize and conquer and, you know, hurt this, this ugly malice. Um, so that, that's, that is one of the ways you can understand what he means by, and of course, I think, uh, the other the other way that he you can understand heart of darkness as a metaphor is because at the time because europeans at this time had this belief that they were civilizing people and there was this was actually a favor that you go into people's lands and rob them blind so yeah this whole concept of civilization so at the time the african subcontinent was like uh was like a sort of uncharted territory on the map or the european map as you because i'm pretty sure it existed on everyone else's map but apparently nobody cares about that so uh uh, apparently on the European or the British map, it was kind of like, you know, they hadn't, they didn't know what was what yet. So maybe that is also, you know, like um, going forth. Into, but, but mostly uh, Conrad was interested in that Freudian idea of going deep into your subconscious and figuring out what makes you do things. It's like it's a journey into oneself is probably the most accurate understanding of the metaphor of Heart of Darkness. Anyway, the other thing that I would like to say but while this, you see, is completely anti-racist, he is, of course, battling with himself. There is this kind of... Um, he is... He's living in a weird paradox, <coughs> which I will come to in a bit. Uh, yeah, he also writes, All that mysterious life of the wilderness that stirs in the forest, in the jungles, in the hearts of wild men, there's no initiation either into such mysteries. He has to live in the midst of the incomprehensible, which is also detestable. 
And it has a fascination too that goes to work upon him. The fascination of the abomination, you know. Imagine the growing regrets, the longing to escape, the powerless disgust, the surrender, the hate. So this, I imagine, is the point of view of the settler or the colonizer as he sees it. Firstly, he thinks that whatever he does, whatever man, and by man he is referring exclusively to the Europeans, he thinks that whatever they cannot understand is also, because it is incomprehensible, it is also detestable, which of course is just his point of view. Uh, and it has a fascination, and, and you see this a lot because I was reading Orientalism by Edward Said recently, and it's again this sort of ex exotic, what is it called, exoticization, is it? That you think that all of those cultures are exotic and therefore they are either pleasing, confusing or detestable. Um, so yeah. And then, and then this last line reminds me very much of the A.G. Wells novel, um, The Island of Dr. Moreau, which is growing regrets, longing to escape the powerless disgust. So in a way, what you understand from it is that colonialism is a disease, but it's a very much a two-way disease. Even though, even though the colonizers seem to be the ones in power, uh, the thing is they they are affected just as much, which you also see in the character of Kurtz later on. I think I'm going ahead of myself, so I'm going to slow down. But yeah, so colonization, he sees it as a disease. It's a plague. It's taken this previously fertile, abundant, resource abundant. Uh, thriving land and turned it almost into this wasteland of this ivory producing factory where people are dying by the dozens or the hundreds because they're simply not counting how many of the local people are dying of disease or, and starvation. So it's that, but at the same time, it is also affecting the ones who are committing this injustice. The character Kurtz, who we see later on, is this, uh, you know, this really magnetic ivory trader who apparently has settled in some jungle and apparently um, emits a tribe of cannibals, no less. And he's kind of manipulated them into serving him. But at the same time, he's also lost completely his mind. So it's, 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 it's very much a two-way thing, but I think the effects on the perpetrator are not as quickly um, understood, you know, because when you when you hurt somebody, when you take something from somebody, you're hurting your own soul very much, but the effects are not apparent right away. So that is also another one of the themes, as I understood it, in, in this novella. Then, you know, there is that famous line in Heart of Darkness, the horror, the horror. I think you, you may have seen it. I, I mean, I think a lot of TV shows made like a parody. I, I think even in The Simpsons, there was a parody of it. I'm not sure. But... Um, so again, it's it's the same thing that it is a form of self poisoning as well. Just as ha just as the, co uh, the colonizers have poisoned the land, they've also poisoned themselves. So yeah, fun fact, you know, one of the major reasons for PTSD, most psychologists agree, is what is when people are reminded of what they've seen themselves do, or you know, they had a they had a version of themselves in their mind, but when they go to war or something traumatic happens, that version is shattered, maybe. Uh, for ambition or to or to survive and that is one of the main triggers of their PTSD later on so I think I, I think that is also kind of an understated underlying theme so the impression that I got the second time that I read Heart of Darkness is that Conrad is sort of energetically challenging the edicts of the Empire as it were but at the same time the problem is the problem uh, is that he does not he does not think that the local people of the Congo are the Europeans equal. That, that's, that's the main problem. That is pr probably why there's all of the, uh, that's probably why some people think, literary critics in particular, that, that the book attests, uh, that the book kind of contributes to the dehumanization. It's because he does not think that, he feels, he feels sympathy for them. He empathizes with them almost. But it's always, he, he, he sort of puts it forward as, or poor creatures, or, well, I'm going to actually say it straight from, if I can find. It was paddled by black fellows. You could see from afar the whites of their eyeballs glistening. They shouted, sang, their bodies streamed with perspiration perspiration. They had faces like grotesque masks, these chaps, but they had bone muscle, a wild vitality, an intense energy of movement, but that was as true as they surf along their coast. Then another one. A lot of people, mostly black and naked, moved around like ants. 
They passed me within six inches without a glance with that complete death-like indifference of unhappy savages. Dark things seemed to stir feebly. So you see, it's, it's the way that he is referring to them. So that's problematic because see, he, he, he feels for them the way one might feel for a creature that is suffering. But at the same time, the inherent racism of his time is very much present in his own mindset as well because he does not think that these people are the same. He does not, in fact, even think that they are people at all. Uh, so, so while he, he talks about all the injustice and the brutality, he has not, uh, he is neither a perpetrator nor is he a liberator. He is simply a passive, well, almost a passive aggressive observer of, of the events that are happening. Or is, you know, obviously the narrator that he has created. And the other thing was, but at the same time, you see that he, he does, he does dismiss the whole thing as a lie, all the imperialist kind of ventures. There was an air of plotting about that station, but nothing came of it. Of course, it was as, it was as unreal as everything else, as the philanthropic pretense of the whole concern, as their talk, as their government, as their show of work. The only real feeling was a desire to get appointed to a trading post where ivory was to be had so that they could earn percentages. So it's like, you know, that philanthropic pretense that's very interesting because that uh, echoes the point that I made before that you know all the all the all the colonies in the world that have existed there's always been this I'm sorry I've done something to the mic somewhere he also doesn't think that women are the intellectual equals of man uh, there was something that struck my attention so yeah I mean heart of darkness is an incredibly well written piece of work um, perhaps one of the most well-written that I've had reason to read. But at the same time, of course, literature is re-evaluated in every age and in every century, rather. And, you know, meanings are interpreted differently. And, of course, these people did belong to a certain time, and they, everyone is a byproduct of their time, even people who rebel against it. So, yeah, I'll see you soon. Uh, let me know what you thought. We can discuss this further. Uh, this was just one tangent that I took out of the book. Um, but let me know what you think. I'll see you soon. Bye.